The GES um, have moved to introduce the comprehensive sexuality education to public basic schools in the country this next academic year, and it continues to face very strong opposition. Opponents of the controversial documents designed and presented to government by the UNFPA fear that the ultimate agenda of the Comprehensive Sexuality Education Program is to promote homosexuality among school pupils as young as 10 years. For proponents like the UNFPA research that shows that the majority of adolescents lack the knowledge required to make decisions relating to the sexual responsibility, leaving them vulnerable to coercion, sexually transmitted infections, and unintended pregnancy. The comprehensive sexuality education, therefore, enables young people to protect their health, their well-being, and their dignity. Is that really the case? And if so, why so much opposition? The executive director of the National Coalition for Proper Human Sexual Rights and Family, Moses Fo Amweni, is one of such opponents to the planned introduction. Welcome, Mr. Amweni. Well, thank you very much, my dear. To make the point that I'm representing the coalition that includes the Christian Council, well, all the Christian groups, the Muslim groups as well, and our traditional rulers. That's a huge coalition that has its basic aim as providing an Afrocentric response to the LGBT activism around the world and the family values of the African you know, society. Okay, I also have in the studio host of World Congress family, Mama Kathy. She's another strong opponent to this idea, and she's here as well. The PPAG, who are advocating the implementation of the program, will also join us later for further clarification. Good morning and welcome, Mama Kathy. Thank you very um, much. So let me start with you, Mama Kathy. This morning on the Super Morning Show, you called this a demonic agenda. Um, what are your thoughts on it, and why did you come to that conclusion? I, I came to that. Thank you very much, and uh, a big thank you to every person that is watching us right now. I came to that conclusion after having gone through a few of the gone through the materials that is supposed to give life and give you know birth the CSC for Ghana and other not only Ghana but other African countries and even the West. And I've realized that the agenda is to sexualize children. And we have more than enough problems. To add that to a child, probably from the age of four, right up there, it's really an agenda that is meant to extinct humanity in Africa. So I, I don't believe it's right. I don't believe it's right. I have gone through quite a number of it. it, it um, awakening erotism in children is something that you don't think is right for a child. You know, teaching children some intricate things about sexuality is not something that you want to play with. And so it's an agenda from hell. I will stop it at the bat. Mr. Amwini, we have to necessarily educate our children about the realities of what is going on in the world today. Um, is this not what this um, is seeking to do? Well, sadly, it's not the case. And let me just start from the broad perspective. I'm just going to give you a quotation from a book, Stra Strained Relationships, The Challenge of Homosexuality, written by Professor Mollenbeck. By the way, he's an Australian professor of sociology and anthropology and also theology. Now, he states in this page that the rapid advance of homosexual, the homosexual movement and its accompanying uh, 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 trying to move society has not happened by accident. In summary, the point he's trying to make is they have a de definitive strategy and they have a plan. Two, that plan is very subliminal. They basically look to falsehoods, half-truths, mm -hmm. and bare-faced lies in order to achieve their agenda. So this CSE thing is a classic LGBT strategy, and they started it in the 60s. So it's not that they wanted, they came in by chance. CSE, Comprehensive Sexuality Education. Question, Don't, didn't we have uh, you know, sexual education in Ghana? This book, which was signed by Professor Opoku uh, Amanko, a very good friend of mine, very learned person, you know, he starts by introducing and telling us that in Ghana, our own traditional people have a way of training our youth in sexuality. Indeed, uh, the whole aspect of uh, puberty is a way of bringing our children from childhood into adolescence. That's our traditional view. Question, why don't we have, uh, uh, you know, don't we have enough intellectuals in Ghana to sit down and bring out what is our traditional view of how to train our people in sort of a superimposition of the whole concept? And, and I'll go through some of the things that they, they push. Uh, CS, according to CSE, sexual pleasure is a right. Sexual rights are human rights. Sexual pleasure should be employed by people of all ages, regardless of age. Limiting access to sexual information or sexual services violates a child's sexual rights. 
more importantly, children should be able to exercise their sexual rights without interference from their parents, guardians, or other adult caregivers. This is a classic LGBT strategy. They've used it in America, in Europe, and in Canada yeah. to such an extent that right now in Australia, if you are a homosexual, you've gotten to because of biological problems or hormonal problems, and you want to seek counseling, you can't even get it. That's how bad it is. So, my dear, they, you know, they come nicely because Africa, we don't have money. So UNESCO has funded some something. Oh, we want to improve your education. And that's how they want to do it. We have the facts. We have the details. And if the ministry and the Ghana Education Service didn't know, we will expose them to the knowledge. We will expose them to the facts so they can take a decision and withdraw. Generally, as we say in Akan, ikrasi maka and so many years. Um, apparently, in the U.S. now, there are 21 genders. Um, as far as we knew, there was male and female. That's <laughs> <precise>. <laughs> but That's apparently, there's 21 now. What kind now of a joke yeah. the whole thing has 21, become? 21 yes. genders. What is the meaning of that? And if people say that it is only not in the guideline, it's good you're saying this. Mm. What is male and female? Look at the uh, schedule one to the guidelines by the ministry, signed off by the ministry. Of I will just go through quickly. Uh, this is what they're going to teach to uh, six-year-olds. Uh, you know, that's six year olds. Myself, being a male or a female, that is uh, session, the first, third section, and that is to a six year old. You mean a six year old doesn't know he's a male and a female? Really? Go and talk to my son, you know, uh, Moses, brother Fo. He knows it even before you begin it. So the real idea is to go into the gender thing that you're talking about, that there are other genders apart from these things. But as far as we know, all these things are abnormalities. Look, we're not against homosexuals. Mm -hmm. Our coalition, our tagline is winning with the love and care of God. I am an Albino, look at me. So if I'm projecting this agenda, it is out of a lot of annoyance, you know, because the people who pretend that they want to help us, they don't even begin to appreciate it. What homosexuals and people like that need is help, comfort <laughs> to address the problems that they have. And we in Africa are saying we have the psychological knowledge, the psychiatric knowledge, the medical knowledge, the counseling knowledge, and the spiritual knowledge put together in what we call a holistic sexual therapy system that we will introduce to deal with the problem. So for once, it will not be as if all knowledge comes from Europe or Caucasian culture. Okay. We in Africans are also intelligent. I totally get that. Mama Kathy, yes, yes. Um, okay, so I have the um, Know It, Own It, Live It is the Comprehensive Sexuality Education Manual in front of me. Now, page 14 um, is addressed at nine-year-old children, and there's a section. It says, some people who want to change their sex may use hormones and or undergo surgery to alter their sexual organs permanently. Such procedures are complicated and costly, but to those who seek it, the change is of vital importance. You read it yourself. Yes. So <laughs> if your nine-year-old daughter mm. came home and said that this is what she has learned in school, That's it. what would be your response? My response, I would draw him from that school. First mm. of all, get to the school authority and find mm. out where that is coming from. Mm. Because that is an affront to me as a person, mm. as a parent, and as a custodian of a life that is yet developing. Mm. It's an affront on me. So I will take it very personally. But if I withdraw him, uh, you know, quietly, nobody will really know about it. So I will address the PTA mm. and find out where this came from, that my child will come back asking and requesting that her sex be changed. It will not be something that I'll sleep. No, 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 no. I'll take it up. But you see, the argument is that this kind of information is available to our children. Mm -hmm. On YouTube, on the internet, yeah. on Google, it's slowly seeping mm -hmm. into their cartoons, into the things that they watch. So mm -hmm. are we turning a blind eye or are we sticking our heads so in the sand by why, not addressing that? That is why as a founding president of Family Renaissance, what I have been doing close to two decades is bringing parents back to the place of taking responsibility for their children. Because you cannot only be addressing the stem or the branches. The root is what is going on in the homes. Who are you leaving your children with? Who is training your children? Who, are, who is exposing your children to whatever? Okay, there is internet, there is aflos, a, um, influx of information from all over the place. But we, it is a wake-up <laughs> call that parents must come to a place they take responsibilities mm -hmm. for the children they have. Mm -hmm. And then government must also rise to the challenge. Mm -hmm. Constitution 
additionally, they must protect the rights of the children and not allow them to be exposed to things that are contrary to what they stand for. Then our traditional rulers have to also reinforce from the traditional you know, uh, platform what the parents need to know at the grassroots, from the grassroots, from cradle really to grave. Let's take responsibility so that we are not only being run over by the influx of information from out the outside world, mm -hmm. because I think that is where the problem is. Mm -hmm. Spend time so that your children are not left at the mercy of information that is coming from people who don't have their interests at heart. Moses, let me yes. come to you. Yes, um, so our 12 to 14 year olds, according to the manual, will be taught how to put on condoms. Mm -hmm. Now the, the, the uh, manual suggests that there will be um, some sort of of, of structure, and I use the word structure loosely, but let's, let's, let me call it as it is. There'll be a sort of maybe a wooden mm -hmm. penis yes, they would in a classroom yeah, for 12 to 14 year yeah. olds. A yeah. female volunteer will mm -hmm. be asked to join for demonstration, mm -hmm. and she will pick a male condom, mm -hmm. examine the expiry date, and show it to her partner. Mm -hmm. They will be taught how to carefully tear open the packet and remove the condom, mm -hmm. how to put it on, and then finally how to carefully slide or remove the condom off the penis and dispose of the used condom properly. Yeah. 12 yeah. to 14 yeah. year old. You see, my dear, mm. they know, these LGBT people know, that if they bring this directly to Ghana, we'll reject it, and it doesn't matter what kind of a politician you are, you're going to be thrown out of the country. So what do they do? They come nicely through UNESCO, go through the Ghana, uh, the ministry, convince them that, oh, you need to reform your education, and they've got money. We're struggling in Ghana because of money. So we will help you. And then they produce guidelines mm -hmm. and hide the details from, from people. Look, look at, look at even the color of, of the show it to your, your, you know, your viewers. What is the color of this? This is LGBT. This is the color of the LGBT movement worldwide. So PPAG Ghana cannot tell us that, oh, and, and you know, we heard from the ministry and the, the Planned Parenthood Association of Ghana and also the Council for uh, Cur Curriculum and Development. They are saying that, no, well, they, they, this, Ghana has espoused all the LGBT things. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It is not true. You cannot eat your cake and have it. Once you have dipped your hand into the meal, no. you've got to eat everything. Yeah. And tr to be honest with you, my dear, Ghana is not the only place where this thing has been done. It's, they've gone to Nigeria, they've gone to Gambia, Mali, South Africa. These Ethiopia. countries have, Ethiopia, these countries have noticed the lie and they're pulling out of it. So with respect to Ghana, we're saying it very simply. I don't think a government that came to power, and this president, I have so much respect for him, came to power on the wings of the battle is the Lord's. There is no one, he's, he's really uh, you know, confident, he believes what he says. I don't think that if you bring these matters to the knowledge of the government, they won't withdraw this. We will bring this information on all of this to the knowledge of the ministry, uh, the GES stakeholders. We're going to have a conf press conference next week, educate everybody. The videos, we're going to bring all the technical information to bear on it, and I know after the conference, we're going to hold the World Congress of Families from the 28th of November, October to the 3rd of Oct uh, November. November. After we have finished, we are confident that the government will say, Ukrasi Maka, Ensumen Mie. Mama Kathy, yes, please. we're a secular nation. 70% of Ghanaians are Christians, there's no doubt about that, That's but it. we are a secular nation. Mm -hmm. Are, are Christians not pushing this agenda too hard? What about those who actually want their children to know about these the Muslims things? Are even against Let me shock you. You know that we just crossed over from the radio yes. wing, and we were apprehended, two of us, we have the card here, yeah, the of a Muslim mm. man mm. who is waiting right outside. Mm. And he says he will go the extra mile, and all of them are behind this. Mm. It will never take root. Mm. And he looks at me and says, Mama, will you expect my four-year child mm. to be sent to school only to come back telling me this? No, it will help, not happen. Let me help you. Look, this CSE. Ask yourself, have they gone to the Arab country or the Muslim country? They dare not. They, never go. they wouldn't even dare try it. They wouldn't go and do it. So it is not about Christianity. Has even our traditional system, even our natural family system is against it. Look, when you go into the bi biology of the world, tell me where plant is male and female. Because pollination is from the female to the Tony male. Yeah. Look at animals so and human beings. So how can you say we've got 21 genders? Clearly, this is a manufacturing of facts in terms of biology and human existence, just trying to meet the whims and caprices of an activist group who've got money, who've got influence, and who think, because they have all of that, we're afraid of them. Well, my dear, we're not afraid of them. And I'm indicating to you, we're serving notice that the United Nations system, UNESCO, uh, you know, World Health Organization, have all been infiltrated by this LGBT movement. They even have a diversity. 
Go and talk to uh, Professor Adai. He left the UN because he wanted to you know, operate his Christian values. So many people can't. I went to the UN for, uh, you know, disability conference. When I was speaking about this matter, guess what? The Ghana appeal said, Moses, uh, don't talk, you know, over here you don't do it. So I said, really? UN, we can't talk? That's how bad it has gotten. They are controlling our minds, and the best way to do is to use the education system. It won't work. How do we protect our children from this? How do we protect? Let's come back to taking responsibility for our children. Marry right set up the structure, respect the structure of the family because it's an affront on the family. How do you protect your children? Guard them. The natural habitat of humanity is love. So from home, let the children trust in their parents. Let the children know that the safe heaven they have is that home. And let the children be exposed to what is going on outside, the rudiments of all of these excesses outside. Let them trust in the parents. So this is no time for a man to say, I don't care about my children. This is no time for a mother to say, I don't care about my children. This is the time that they must work together as a body because they know the enemy out there is out to devour their children. So it's time to place emphasis on marriage, place emphasis on family. The churches should rise up and teach the truth. All the other bodies should rise up and teach the truth so that the truth will set the people free. Thank you very much. And meanwhile, proponents insist the subject's content would however be age appropriate. So the toddlers would be empowered with values that would protect them from sexual harassment. Speaking on the Super Morning Show, advocacy officer of the PPAG, Akajiri Atibinori Joshua, said the subject is essential for the growth of young people. Where in this country do we talk about these things? And where do we find a lot of young people? They are in school. And if you don't want to introduce comprehensive sexuality education to expose young people to this scientifically accurate information, culturally responsive, because we are looking at the cultural context, and it should respond to the needs of the people within the context. And it's age appropriate. You can't go and be talking to a 10-year-old girl about abortion. When you look at the curriculum, we have a manual. If you look at the curriculum, the age to start talking about comprehensive sexuality education is at age five. And at that age, you talk about values, personal hygiene. Hmm? Don't you think a five-year-old should know about values? Personal values, family values, community mm -hmm. values. Don't you think they should know? Don't you think they should know personal hygiene? Don't you think they should know that if someone touches this part, it's private. Don't let anyone touch. If someone touches, you tell your mom, you tell your teacher, you tell your, your dad. Don't you think people should know about these things? <laughs> And the Ghana AIDS Commission agrees. Here's Acting Director General Treme Etuyahine. HIV prevention is, we have the technology, we have all the tools available to ensure that young people especially uh, do not get infected. And so they have to, you know, use these uh, 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 prevention methods, using condom at all times, even if you trust that your partner is faithful to you or until you test and know your status, both of you test and know your HIV status, you must continue using condoms at all times. And even when you test, you have no way of guaranteeing that your partner is not, you know, uh, having uh, extra uh, affair. And so you need to continue using condom unless you are married and you can stick to each other, you can trust each other, and ensure that you, you support each other to remain faithful in your marriage. And that was the response from the Ghana AIDS Commission and the PPAG. Um, I give my last word to my guests in studio. Sweden, look, he was talking about marriage. These children, are they married? It shows you it's a lie, too. When it gets to HIV AIDS, I want to ask the director, the statistics show that nine out of 10 people who get HIV AIDS is because of homosexual activity in Ghana. That's the statistic. What's he doing about it as a member of the National AIDS Commission? So it's all a lie. We're going to respond to it, and they will have the opportunity to save their bit. But that's not true. It's, it's a known fact that when children engage in sex before time, depression gets high. Suicidal tendencies get so high. Drug addiction becomes something because they are trying to kill and numb the pain of betrayal, of frustrations they encounter. So you can never use condom to replace 
the emotional trauma we are going to be exposing Ghanaian children to. Enough is enough. The truth must be told. Thank you, Thank you very much to Mr. Moses for Amoni and to Mama Kathy as well. And still to come, we have Kobe Spikey Nkrumah. He'll be joining us for Tech Talk. Um, all that and more after the break.